robot framework is just a wrapper around any of your testing api right so you could have your even custom testing things but robot framework is just a wrapper around it so it's more of uh, if you ask me what it is it is a tester specific language which is descriptive in nature which internally decides which api to use the tester need not know the scripting language now it's very difficult for me to go and tell the tester that i'm using vector today use keppel you have to learn keppel then i go and tell him i have switched to python you have to learn python then somebody decides to use busmaster so i tell my tester that now you need to learn uh, cpp and it doesn't work because the tester is a domain guy who understands how to test the ecu but he need not keep learning new scripting languages so then robot framework is a good wrapper you could actually define a domain specific language for your tester the tester needs to only understand that you could in the background keep changing your scripting languages the tester doesn't care about it right so like i could show you a simple example of how the robot framework looks internally it uses python but then for the same tester uh, motor that motor example that i showed you i have got the same tester.py implemented using the robot framework right so every time i need to establish a connection um with the so so if you see here look at looking at the test case it's straight and simple right i first so i'm just opening my tester.py parallelly so that you could read both of it uh okay it came down i'm so sorry let me just move this right so yeah right so i i started my tester so what did i do here so i'm just trying to do a comparison of my python code and my robot framework so i initially had to load my dbc file then i had to set up my canvas and then create a tester node object and then start the tester node and then i start doing my exp check expect send and all sort the same thing is done here i first have to set up the canvas and the canvas values are given by variables so my interface is socket can my channel is vcan 0 my bit rate is uh this one 5 lakhs by bits and uh, my timeout and my default node in my dbc and my dbc path and then using this it first does the setup line it creates the canvas and then my immediate step is to expect expect is nothing but check so i say check the reception of the can signal check can signal name of the signal equal to 0 now if you go here i'm using an eclipse uh, robot editor so if you see here i could do control space and this will tell me all the possible domain specific syntaxes that you have so you have check can signal equals to signal value you could say check can signal not received you could say check can signal not received within this timeout that maybe you don't have a dbc then you can work with frame ids so you could say check if the frame id has been received so many times so this comes with an intellisense so this editor is really good it actually gives you control space options so i could so for example if i have to do this i could actually just say can can signal and then it just has me to fill the variables in between so i could say ms speed so this, this is my dbc signal name i want to check the value so i say the value is 0 and then i have a default time out here right so pretty simple so my first line was to expect the motor status and check the speed that's exactly what this is doing then i wanted to send the speed as 50 so i send signal mc speed with value 50 then i wanted to check if the speed is 50 so check the reception i'm going in checking the signal if it's equal to 50 then i wanted to send the speed as 0 i'm checking if the speed is 0 so exactly this but in a more descriptive language and in the background so how does a robot framework work right just to give you a quick introduction so there is 
So the dot robot file is what you write. In turn, it refers to a keyword file which understands this syntax of yours. So if you see here, this is the source editor, but then I have a tabular editor. You can define your own, uh, uh, and then you have this keyword file. So if I open the keyword file for you, right? So I'm just going to close all of this. Uh, so I'm not confusing you. I'm only going to do with the files that are of my interest when it comes to a robot filter. Right. And then I have a curve.py. Right. So that's your flow. So this is the script that I wrote. Right. But it, but then how does he understand it's check, send, send signal. So these keywords, these syntaxes are defined in curve.robot, which is your keyword file. So if I search for this, so let's say I search for check signal, I copy this, I go here. I search for that. You see here, just send signal variable value variable. So whatever you fed here is sent through the variables over here, but then that is not enough. This is just the syntax definition of your descriptive language from here. It then has to be the same can tools and can that we use has to be used. So now how do I know which is the method for this? So then I copy this. So if you see in the starting, it says I refer to this library curve.py. So then I go here. I search for this with an underscore in the middle. And that's my method name. And so when you say send signal here, it goes to the send signal here, send signal here and that send signal then in turn goes to this one code, right? And then he uses the same methods that you would have used self dot DB dot get the message with this name. And then he composes an encoded signal value and then uses the can message and then sends on the can bus. This is exactly the same code that we typed in all our other examples. Right. So when we talk of robot film, you need to have your library in the background in the uh, following the programming syntax. Then you need to have a keyword file, which talks about your domain specific language, which your scripters will know. And then, the test suit is basically the test case is written based on that. And this is developed by the tester. This and this is provided by the person who made the robot framework that will fit your environment or your testing bench. Right. And now to show you how this runs, right. So I'm just going to close all this. I am just going to invoke my, uh, motor.py. So that's my ECU. So that needs to run before I run my test case. So my ECU is running. Now the next part is to launch my test case. Okay. I currently, my, my, um, launcher is currently a command line based. It's not enabled on Eclipse yet. So I'm just going to go to my command line. Um, Open the terminal, right? Right. I'm just going to use robot followed by my script. So the command is robot followed by the robot script that you want to run. I'm now running the test case. You see the, my motor is responding. That's why you see the sysouts here. It got 50, 0, 45, 65, and then it got the FF. And you saw, you see here the test scripts ran. Right. And, uh, all of them passed. I didn't have a negative case there and it generated an HTML report. And this is the latest report here. So that's a report which the robot framework generated. So if you open this, it shows you the test cases that we ran on the, so yeah, so it shows you the test cases we ran, check the reception, check the reception. Yeah, the send check it's, it's alphabetically arranged. And then I could just go inside and get more details on the steps that it's 
followed. So what was the suit process? What were the steps it followed? So it first had to load the DVC, then uh, and then check the statement and what really happened when the check happened. So it went inside. It tried to do a compare. If there was a failure, it would give you details of the failure itself. And and so every step can be checked out. So you could actually expand and see what really happened at what time. And, and, and the report is pretty much uh, detailed enough to, but you could customize this also. The reports can be customized. You could have a different format of your HTML report also. So, right. So that basically talks about <coughs> testing the simulated ECU uh, using robot framework. 